Okay. So, hello everybody. Uh, this is uh, going to be our session on online playtesting uh, and tabletop sim simulator. Uh, the format of today's session, which should be just an hour, uh, we're going to do like 15 minutes or 10 to 15 minutes of, of, of just a quick Q&A about um, or discussion between myself and Carl about uh, online playtesting. Uh, and then uh, Carl will go through an uh, example of how to get things set up in Tabletop Simulator. Uh, and then uh, we can we'll open up to questions from other people. Okay? Cool. Um, so. Sorry, I just need to pull up the questions. Uh, on my phone, because I don't want that to turn up on the, the screen recording. <laughs> okay, so uh, so just just to start off, uh, Carl, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, what's your background, um, and you know how do you get into online playtesting and or playtesting in general? Yep. So hi everybody. My name's Carl. I'm in Melbourne, Australia. Um, I have a engineering and IT background. And in 2015 um started doing it part-time um more professionally from 2018 onwards um so i met aaron um at incubator melbourne um which was a group that aaron ran which i've um sort of taken over and nibble um and now completely online and through lockdown we ran um fully online so we set up um moved everything online and australia wide um and as far as broad as um we've got some japanese people in the group now um and some europeans coming along as well um so we've got um quite well, which is probably 98 percent um all in tabletop simulator um so yeah i've got a couple of well yeah two signed games one published one coming out later mm -hmm. this year and a heap of others that are being looked at by people hopefully coming out soon, I guess is my general back. Yep. Sorry. Uh, ho hopefully it will be a bit better later, but like, uh, the connection is not really great on my end, unfortunately. Uh, okay. So, 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 um, what do you see as the benefits and opportunities of, of, of online playtesting? Because like, um, obviously we've had to do it not not really by choice yep. because of the pandemic uh, last year and this year. Um, but I guess the, having taken to that because of, of, uh, of a, a need to, 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 to shift to this, um, what are the, the benefits or like the, um, the bright sides that you found for like online playtesting? Um, so I think probably like a lot of people, I was against going online when it very first started. Um, it seemed like a, another big learning curve that I'd have to just deal with. Um, but after we went into full lockdown in um, Melbourne, um, where we basically no one could go any further than five kilometers from their homes, which is probably similar to like what you guys had um, when it was quite tight, um, it sort of became a bit of a necessity that we had to. Um, so I sort of just embraced it from there. And I think it's been an invaluable tool that I'll probably keep using outside of um, lockdown as well. Um, so I think probably the biggest thing is the the speed that you can iterate online compared to um, physically making prototypes, um, and the which is both the ease of getting something to the table digitally as opposed to cutting everything out. Um, as well as having access to so many more people and it being so much easier for people to gather. So a big thing we found um, with the groups that I ran, so I was running Incubator Melbourne, which would meet up once a month, and then I ran a small um, group at my house as well, um, just with a small group of friends that would meet fortnightly. Um, we sort of, I tried to do it more frequent than that with the in-person ones, and it sort of never just really eventuated. Um, doing it online, we found that it was just so much easier for people to jump on at any time so that anybody could just get on at any time so we ended up doing weekly and we have been doing weekly um meetups at least um since um april last year 
So the my iteration cycle or iteration loop for developing games has just gone up massively, which has been um, just huge to be able to get um, so much more testing done. Um, and then with all the different groups there are, I'm quite lucky in that I work um, three days a week. So I've got two days dedicated to game design um, stuff. Um, and there's quite a few groups in um, in America. So there's three three big ones um, that all line up quite nicely with the time zones for Australia and probably line up reasonably well for Malaysia as well. Um, so being able to have access to those as well um, and play in those various playtest groups as well, just to get a lot wider um, range of people playing your games. It's just amazing. Yeah, because it's, it's not just with the online playtesting, but like a lot of conventions and stuff have had to go online last year. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I know we did uh, PAX Online, uh, which was, you know, good and bad. Um, but like, w what other kind of other on opportunities opened up to, to you online compared to, to yep. before? Um, there's been tons of... Pitching um, happening online that used to happen at conventions um, is all online, which is fantastic because that opens up um, events that you previously would have had to attend, like international events, to all being online. So it, the time zones usually suck, but it means we can at least get to them. So I had a pitch to Ravensburger um, last year. I've got another one, another pitch with them coming at a, um, yeah half a dozen different um yeah european um and american publishers online uh, um as well as as the um game manufacturers association um based in america coming up um shortly um the unpubs which are um american um conventions they've been really good uh again american time zone so you've got to sort of work work within that but um again access to these these events that um you wouldn't otherwise have access to yeah i know i know from from malaysia hua siang um who's one of the other designers in tt in, in malaysia has, has managed to do quite well with uh the pitch project online um which was like run by the nice. uh senfong and a bunch of other people who, who have a uh, a new website. I can't remember what the website itself was called. Um, yeah, but the pitch project was like like a, a, a big big opportunity that opened up, um, and as well as like all the other ones where you don't have to like pay for a flight to the US to like meet with publishers. Like you just have to sp sp take the time to like make sure your time zones line up and like are able to attend the event. Um, I guess with, with, with what you're mentioning, the time zones are a problem. Um, so, what are the challenges uh, that come with online playtesting? Like, what what's the the downsides to it? Yep. Um, so, yeah, like you mentioned, time zones is probably one of the big ones. That there are a lot of groups, but they're generally based in um, um, outside of the world. Um, but I think we're starting to get more and more over here as well. So um, you've got your own little Malaysia one now as well. We've got Incubator Online, which um, everybody is welcome to be a part of as well. Um, that's open up worldwide. Um, so other problems that you can, or that you sort of do stumble across in tabletop simulator and online in general, um, everything tends to take longer. Um, so you'd expect a play test to go for probably than it would in real life is usually sort of the rough estimate, um, depending how fiddly or like how many pieces there are in the game, how much piece, how many pieces you have to move around. Um, you also don't get any of that feedback um, that you'd visually get from sitting and watching people at a table. Um, so seeing people like disconnect or touch their phones um, is often a big, for me, a big um, sort of red flag. Um, you don't have any of that online. Um, some people will play with video on, but mostly it's just, voice chat um so it, you, you've got to try and pick up on cues a little differently um so you lose out on a little bit of that um anything where you're physically trying to test um that's got any sort of 3d element to it um or sort of um more fiddly element where you're placing things under things or to see how that actually plays um is obviously a lot trickier to um assess 
in um, tabletop simulator or online um, tools than in person as well. So um, yeah, there's definitely some drawbacks there um, as well. Um, so so what are the some of the ways that that you you found to like try and deal with the the drawbacks? Um, like, do you have any tips on on that, or it's just like oh, being aware that these are the drawbacks and just like work around them, or even how do you work around them? I guess. Yeah, I think mostly just being aware. Um, so you, you, if you um, can program, Tabletop Simulator does have scripting in it, so you can a long time. Um, so I was talking to a publisher the other week who reckons that they can get um, one of their newest games, they can play faster in Tabletop Sim now mm-hmm. than they can in real life, um, um, easier. Um, but that's not really something I'd recommend doing for prototype, um, at least heavily. Um, I think there are more things to be aware of. Um, so I, I wouldn't use digital testing as a purely as your only method of testing, um, but definitely early on when you're trying to iterate a lot quicker um, and obviously through lockdowns, um, it's, it's been invaluable. Uh, I guess I guess let's talk a little bit about Tabletop Simulator itself uh, specifically uh, as we we, we kind of like wrap up here. Um, so it's like before before you get started, like showing us how to get something set up on Tabletop Simulator. It's like why why use Tabletop Simulator? Like there's a lot of other options out there with like Tabletopia or like for for some simple card games, maybe you can go on like PlayingCards.io or like some other platforms. Um, so what what are the the pros and cons of of using tabletop simulator? What was that? That was other, what other programs are there? Uh, Tabletopia was the the other um, big one, and yeah, yeah, yep, yep. So table, Tabletopia is the other big one. Um, there's a new one called ScreenTop.io, um, which is a very program heavy based one in the back end, but that's pretty cool as well. It's all web based, mm-hmm. um, and all just top down two D. Um, it's fairly new, um, and they've got a Discord as well, so they're quite um, quite involved in the community. You can just message the developer directly um, and do stuff in there as well. Um, so I'd recommend checking that out if you've got any sort of programming background as well. Yep. Yeah, I think it's like JavaScript, right? Like it's all yes. JavaScript driven. Yep, yep. Um, so yeah, there's definitely differences between them. I think like any software, like using word or google docs there's always going to be little differences between one better than the other i tend to find or i think most um designers tend to find tabletop simulator is a lot easier to iterate in um tabletopia being the other big one um tends to be a better um end user experience um so for customers um more or less um but for actually iterating things in is a bit more um fiddly to update things. So um, I've put a couple of things up there uh, for some conventions um, have mandated it because it is free to use um, where you have to purchase Tabletop Simulator. Um, but it's not yeah, it's, it's not very friendly for doing updates um, on your files. You've basically got to sort of re-upload whole portions of it as opposed to just um, small, small bits, which you can do a lot easier, I find, in Tabletop Simulator. Yeah, I th- I, like it has it. It makes you use the library first before you can upload into a scene. Whereas tabletop simulator, you just upload it straight into a scene. Yeah, you can just um, drop it straight onto the table, and it's there. Yeah, yeah. I guess the 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 <laughs> the the trade off there is that you need to keep your own files organized on your end before they go into to tabletop simulator. Whereas in Tabletopia, it forces you to organize your files nicely in the library. I guess. Um, yeah. But yeah, uh, I, I, that that's pretty much the the, the intro uh, bit to this. So I'll I'll leave it to you, Carl, uh, to to show us how um, to get something set up in Tabletop Simulator. Uh, oh. And if anyone has any questions, feel free to unmute and ask them. Uh, otherwise, send them in the chat, and I'll try and uh, keep up with that uh, and ask immediately. Cool. cool. Okay. Over to you. Um, so um, I'll basically run through how to put things in, um, and I'll go through cards a little separately. I'll show you why in a second. Um, they're done basically 
um, you've got to get them into a special format. So um, I'll run through as if I was going to set up a game. I've just got a heap of different components and I'll sort of just drop them in as I go. Um, so if I'm going to make a game, um, I'd always go create single player. If I'm doing it, just creating the yeah the game myself, the table, I always just do it in single player. It's just easier. Um, and then just close that first pop-up that's there. Um, this gives you your table in your fancy environment. Um, if we go objects, this is where you'll find um, everything that you need related to um, things that you can drop in. First thing I usually do is go tables and put in the rectangle table, the biggest one, um, or the bigger one. Um, and I generally change the background. You've got a um, museum because it's the only one that doesn't have stuff in it. So it just keeps noise down. Um, physical things that you can then drop in. So Tabletop Sim has a heap of objects that already exist within here. Um, so if we go to components, um, you can see here's all the various things that exist. Um, so a lot of the stuff is in custom, um, which is all the stuff you can put in yourself. I'll get to that in a sec. Um, the basic things that exist, um, we have just general blocks. So um, square, rectangle, triangle, you can just click them, drop them onto the table and they'll appear. Uh, if you want to change the color of anything, uh, more or less in Tabletop Sim, you can just right click on it. You've got a color tint here. You can just change that color to whatever you want. So if you need cubes for different players, you can just go through, change the colors of those. There's your cubes. Um, same as in um, most programs, you can just click on something, control C, control V, um, copy paste it as many times as you want. Um, you can also change the size of things with plus and minus on your keyboard or going to the uh, scale um, option down here in the right click menu. So if I want to shrink that, I can just hold minus and it'll shrink. I want to grow that one, just hold plus and it gets bigger. Um, to reset your view, just to your standard view, if you hit spacebar, that just jumps back to your um, your standard view there, um, or your, your full table full table view. Uh, so, what else have we got? Oh, we, <laughs> we just lost Carl for a bit. We'll just give him a sec to reconnect. I am back. You're back. Uh, let's share that again. My tabletop, uh, my tabletop simulator, my Discord likes to restart whenever I stream, mm -hmm. which is super useful. That's okay. Uh, we'll get back to there. Cool. Um, so that's your general shapes. So square, triangle, um, rectangle. Um, the next thing we have, we've just got player pawns, just general pawns. Um, it's got heaps of colors in here. Again, that's literally just by changing the color. You can change that to whatever you want anyway. Um, the next thing we have, um, if you want a round object, we have either checkers, um, which have the crowns on them, um, or in miscellaneous, um, we have the backgammon pieces. So if you use a white backgammon piece, um, again, you can change that color to whatever you want. Um, to get a round token. Um, next on my list, dice. Um, dice already exist. If you just want standard dice, we have plastic and metal. There's no real difference other than the look um, and that they'll make a metal sound or a plastic sound when you roll them. Um, all your different sizes of dice. Again, you can change the color um, as you would with any other object. Um, you can do custom dice as well. I'll get into that in a second. Um, if you want to put things in things, um, miscellaneous, we have bowls. Bowls are really useful. Again, you can change the size of things. Um, and you can. So another thing you can do is lock things. So if you hover over any item and you press L, that will lock it in place. So that can't be interacted with anymore. So now I can't accidentally pick up my bowl. You can also do that by right clicking um, under your toggle list. Um, you've got lock there as well. So I can go grab all these pieces, you shake them, they'll all come together, and stick them in my bowl. Uh, what else have we got? So last thing we have here that exists already that's useful, bags, um, are probably one of the most useful things. Um, you hover over, it says how many things are in it. Um, if I, let's just copy one of these. So if I grab this red cube, um, paste it a heap of times over here, 
I can drop them into my um, my bag. So that now has seven cubes in it. If you right click on a bag, you do that. Um, I'll stick a couple more of those in there as well. Um, search, you'll see they're in there. Um, now a new feature that they've just recently added, when you right click on a bag, um, you can actually change how you draw things out of the bag, which is super useful. Um, so if you right click on it and go down to order, you've got last in, first out, first in, first out, or random. So generally um, you want random um, for a random draw from a bag. So that will then draw out a random object as opposed to the last object that you just dropped in um, to the bag, where if that's set to um, the last in, first out, if I drop in this blue cube, it will then pull the blue cube out every time. Um, so setting it to random, um, yeah, allows that to be randomly drawn. You can also just hover over the bag and press R. That shuffles the bag, basically. Um, or right-clicking on it and going to shuffle. Um, we'll shuffle the contents as well, but they're still fixed in place once you finish the shuffle. Um, the other bag, um, infinite bag, um, these are really useful um, for when you're just getting started um, with a prototype. I wouldn't recommend using an infinite bag later in development when you're actually trying to keep track of component count, um, but definitely early on, they're quite useful. Um, so what a infinite bag does, whatever you drop into the infinite bag, um, you then have an infinite amount of that thing. Um, it will come out at the exact same, same size as that you dropped it into. So even if I shrink this bag down, um, those will still be the same size that I dropped it in originally. Um, so you want to make sure it's scaled correctly before you put it in the infinite bag. Um, if you get it wrong, you can just right click and reset. It'll take it back out and you can put in your new thing, locks it, yeah, goes in again. Um, same with the bowl or any, any other objects. You You can lock them as well so that they're fixed in. Um, the last thing we have here is a counter. Um, so this is probably one way that you can, instead of using tokens for things such as coins, um, like for keeping track of money, say, um, even if you've got a space for it on your board, just dropping in a counter um, is often the easiest way to actually keep track of it. Um, you can just go plus and minus. It's much quicker um, and simpler in tabletop sim. So I'd highly recommend using them in place of actual tokens um, just to speed up gameplay instead of having to um, mess around trying to move tokens back and forth. Um, cool. So that's all the basic components that I probably would generally use. Um, now we'll jump into the custom component. So um, components custom, this is where all the fun stuff is. Um, so there is a board in here, um, or what they call a board. Um, personally, I don't use this. Um, it's got a really big wooden edge around it that you can see. Um, I'm not even going to import something for it. You can see it's quite thick, um, takes up a lot of room. Um, you can shrink it, of course, um, but the big lip I find is just not to avoid the board. Um, to delete something. Um, so this is already locked. If I just right click on it and hit delete, uh, that will delete the object. Um, so what I would do instead for a board, generally um, I would use a tile. So um, just to quickly run through the different things we've got here in here, we've got tiles and tokens, which are similar, but have some, some differences, which I'll get into um, to why you'd use one over the other. Um, figures, which are standees more or less, um, a deck of cards, um, a single card, um, custom dice, um, custom 3D model, which I'm not going to go into, but if you can do 3D modeling in like Blender or anything like that, you can create your own models and put them in. Um, asset bundle, I've never touched, so I'm not even going to mention it. Um, and then custom PDF is just dropping in a PDF for like a rules document. Um, so first one we'll go over is a tile. So I'll use a tile for a lot of things. Um, so what I've just done there is um, clicked on it, dropped it onto the table, and then right-clicked. Brings up the custom tile input box to um, basically import something into here. Um, I'm just going to divert for a second. So one thing that Aaron um, was saying before was sort of your file management. So whenever you put anything into tabletop, um, tabletop sim, um, you need to upload it to cloud to make it publicly available to anybody else that's going to play. Um, so 
where these actually go, if you go up to modding up the top and go to Cloud Manager, this has all the files that you've uploaded um, into Tabletop Sim. Um, so generally what I do if I'm starting a new project, um, I'll go into here um, and create a new folder. Um, I'm just going to call this demo just to keep my files semi-organized um, in here as well. Um, then what we'll do, so, um, so a tile. Um, so what a tile is in Tabletop Sim, um, it can have basically a different image on either side. Um, it can also have a, a shape to it. So it can be a box, a hexagon, a circle, or a rounded is a, a rectangle or square with rounded corners. Um, so if I was to upload a board, um, so a, like a game board, um, I would do this as a tile just with a single image. So if I go tile, as I've done here, select rounded, go browse local files. Um, <coughs> let's go this board here. So you'll see this pop up here. Um, so this comes up whenever you go to upload anything. Um, if you select it local, that will only be, it will be using the file local um, at a later date. They won't be able to access any of the files. So you always have to go cloud to um, have it available online so that they can download that um, part as well. Um, here's now where we can select that file. Um, and call it that is fine. Um, yep, we'll leave all that as is. So we'll go import as with anything. We can just hover over that, hit plus. That'll make it bigger. Object. If you want to update an object once you've already got it in all at the right size, so say you've updated your your board the graphic you can just right click on that go to custom um, and then you can change um, change the file direct from there it'll keep all the size and everything the same if I wanted to say change that to um, not have round corners so I'll just set it to box go import and let's change the change the corners there can you make um, it so a I'll, rectangle uh, you can so it will be whatever the actual image is that you import so if the image is a rectangle it will import it as a rectangle um, if, for example, I do a hex here and go import, that'll make that a hex. If that image was a rectangle, it would just be an elongated hexagon. Um, same for circle as well. Here it's going to be a perfect circle because my, my board is a circle. But if that was a, um, an, a rectangle to begin with, it would just be an elongated or a, like a stretched um, circle to import. Uh, so I'd, do, um, I'd use tile for... Um, basically anything that you want to have a shape to it, it's a lot. It's very easy to do because you can just do um, click on your shape. Um, doesn't matter too much to make your graphic looking fancy because you can cut this cuts it out for you. Um, the other advantage of tiles is that they're two sided, so you can put something on the other side as well. So just to be silly here, I'm going to upload this coin onto the back. So currently, it's just the same on both sides because it only had one image. Uh, if I import this here, whoop, I change the shape. We'll put it back to the circle. Um, if I flip that now, we've got a coin on the other side. Um, so if you want two-sided objects, um, tile is what you do them as and just shrink it down to whatever size you need. <coughs> Excuse me. Um... So I'm just going to do another tile here, and I'll show you another thing that we can do. So let's go. Um, another useful thing. So I've got my lozenges ready. Um, Another useful thing we have here is stackable. Um, so by ticking this, um, basically it will, will make the object how many of them there are in that stack. And um, we also have a thickness. So if you want the tile to physically be thicker, we can drag that along as well. Go import. Um, so you'll see that's created a thicker tile. If we copy and paste a heap of these, um, we can sit them on top of each other and you'll see that sort of snaps together. 
Um, and when you hover over, it tells you how many there are. So this is really useful for um, tiles in a stack, coins, things like that, to be able to see how many there are, um, to be able to count things quickly. So the next thing we have is a token. Um, token is very similar to a tile, um, but it's got a few key differences. So a token only has a single image, so it has to be the same image on both sides, and it will be mirrored on um, between. It's got a thickness, um, as we had for tiles, um, but we also have a merge distance. Now, what this is, basically what a token will do um, is it will actually cut out um, a shape um, based on the transparency around it. So if you see, I've got this uh, frog, <coughs> excuse me, um, frog meeple or frog shape here, um, which has clear around the outside of it. Um, so we'll upload that. Now, what we can do here is we've got an extra little um, option here, which is called stand up. So if we tick that and go import, what that's going to do um, is basically cut out our frog um, around based about the um, the transparency on the outside of the image. So this is a, um, a PNG for this image um, that just has a clear background around it. Um, and you'll see that's cut that out. Now, I might want that to be thicker, so I can right click on it. Go to custom, bump up my thickness, and go import, and that will make it thicker. So that's how you can import custom meeples um, quite easily. Um, the other thing um, we have so is this merge distance. So basically what this is is how, how closely it will cut out the image. So a um, lower number is closer and higher is um, finer. Um, generally, you can just leave it in the middle. Um, it might make it load a bit faster if it's a um, yeah if it's a higher number so it's a less accurate cut um, it'll be faster to load but generally you can just leave it where it is um, <clears throat> figure uh, I'll just quickly go over that um, so if you're if you are selecting um, a file that you've already selected so for here I'm going to select my frog um, I have already uploaded that so that is now in my cloud manager so I'll go to this um, demo folder that I had here you can see here's all the things I've uploaded so far if I just click on this frog that'll take a copy of the the online link and I can now paste that in here go import um, and now I've got myself my little frog standee instead if you'd prefer that um, method or that um, style as well um, same as before with the cubes if i want to change the color of that base i can just change the tint um, put that to whatever color i want okay um so the next things we have here are decks and dice so decks are a little bit different um to the other things um a single card you'd upload exactly the same but for a deck of cards it's actually a an extra tool that you use um, to to be able to get the the cards in the right format. So you'll see if I if I put down a card here and bring up the custom deck um, box, um, we've got basically the face, which is the image, whether it's got unique backs, um, a width and a height. Now this is actually the um, how many cards there are in the grid um, of the width and the height of the grid, and then how many cards you have in the deck total. So just to jump to um, Windows, I'll show you where this actually, um, where this lives or where we where we find this. Uh, we want to go to here. So um, on your computer, when you install Tabletop Simulator, whatever directory you've got that in, installed to, so for me it's in C, Program Files, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Tabletop Sim, um, there's a modding folder um, that gets uploaded or created when you install Tabletop Simulator as well. So this has a couple of different things in it. Um, it has the dice templates, which I'll get to in a second for custom dice. And it also has a deck builder. So what the deck builder is... I don't think we can see your... Um, is based... Your window, Carl. Are you, you can't. Are you still oh, Tabletop oh. Simulator? No. Hang on. Give me two seconds. Yeah, I'll reshare my... Screen. To, yeah. Need to share sc uh, screen yep. rather than window. Yep. Yep. I uh, was streaming and I will start streaming again. Green. There we go. Sorry. Okay. I will jump back slightly. So, um, yep. So, 
C program files, Steam, Steam apps installed. Um, and we have this modding folder here. So this is the folder that you're looking for um, where you can find the deck builder. So we've got the dice templates there as well. Um, and then the deck builder um, is how basically you can lay. Um, so we'll open that up. Um, I'm just going to shrink that a bit. And then I'm going to open my demo folder. So um, how this works, basically what I've got here is a folder full of um, cards. So they're all as individual cards. Um, as per your other um, items, like as tiles, they can be whatever shape you want. So if they're they're facing the other direction, if they're um, portrait or landscape, doesn't matter. They can be square, rectangle, um, whatever you want, um, as long as they're all the same. Um, so I'm just going to select all of these um, and just drop them straight over into here. Now, this will ask me for a deck size. Um, 10 by 7 is the default and the maximum size that you can make a, a deck um, in tabletop sim. This doesn't mean you can't have a bigger deck physically on the table. You just have to import it as two separate files. Um, so I'm just going to leave that. And I generally always just leave that as 10 by 7. Um, we'll go OK. And basically, that's just going to drop them all into a grid for me. So depending on... Um, your workflow and how you, oh, sorry, uh, how you actually um, lay your files out normally. Um, you might be able to lay them out into a grid directly. Um, the tools I use tend to export them as individual files. So then this tool will put them into that grid for you. Um, you can save the deck. And when you save the deck, that actually creates a folder. Uh, let me go to desktop. Um, that creates tabletop sim database file deck um, that will create that uh, over here. Um, so what this does basically, this is then save the, this deck. So if I am file names and put them in the same folder, if I open this, um, the deck editor um, file, um, that will automatically up update the images in here as well, but um, to export the file. Now, Tabletop Sim mm. can have problems if your files are too large. So it recommends max size to be um, 4096, well, trim it down. Um, you don't need super high res stuff in here. Um, if it is big, it's just going to take ages for everybody to load. So try and keep your stuff small. Um, another little thing that can trip people up um, is if your images are in CYMK, um, it will actually crash Tabletop Sim. I don't know if they fixed that in the latest update, but if you ever have um have your game or your um, file crashing tabletop sim crashing when you're trying to upload a file um it's probably because it's in cymk i mean, instead of rgb um so we'll go export there we'll export the deck and then that will basically just export that um as a grid um so i'll close those we'll go back to here so if i select the face now which is that deck Cloud as before. Um, so we have unique backs. If you do have unique backs, you do the exact same thing. Just make sure that the card in slot one is the, um, yeah, I've got the back for that card in slot one as well. Um, for me, I have the same for everything. So card backs. Um, we had our grid set up to a 10 by seven. So we just leave that as is. And I believe this deck is uh, 55. <coughs> Carl, I cannot believe that it's still a slider. <clears throat> Sorry, as I have a little coughing fit here. Um, yes, it is one of the most annoying things. Um, it's trying to line up that um, <coughs> that little slider there. <laughs> um, so that gives us our deck of cards. Um, so as you can see here, um, that's created the deck. I can right-click on that, go search, 
show me all my cards that are in the deck. Um, so decks, um, you can shuffle with R, just shuffles the deck. Um, you can also deal cards from a deck as well. Um, so to deal cards, if you just if any player just hovers over the deck. Sorry, um, if any player just hovers over the deck and presses a number on the keyboard, um, so if I was to press five, say, that would draw me five cards um, from the deck into my hand. Um, you can also deal to players. So because I'm the only player sitting here, this is only going to deal to me. But if there were other players seated at the table, if you right click on the deck um, and go deal and just click deal to seated, um, that will then deal a single card um, to every player seated at the table. Um, so... <clears throat> The other thing we have in this modding folder um, is the dice templates. So you'll see here we've got D4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and 20. Um, these are just really dodgy images, basically, um, that show you where everything is going to end up. Um, so D6 is generally what I'm playing around with. Um, so you just want to make an image using this as a reference, basically. So the one is going to end up upside down here. So whatever you want in spot one you just want to make sure it's within that border basically um, and so on for all the other numbers as well same for any other size dice it's pretty straightforward you just make sure you've got what you want there um, and then i tend to just fill the rest with um, plain color um, so to import the dice uh, we can just click dice pop it on the table um, size of dice so i've got a d6 here I'll click on the dice here, select, upload, upload, and import. And there we have our custom dice. Um, so you can throw dice clicking and literally throwing them. Um, if you hover over them and press R, they'll roll as well. Um, one annoying thing with dice is that you can't actually rotate them. So if I wanted to rotate this dice um, around, so any, any other object, I can click on it, pick it up, and if I scroll on my mouse, that'll ro um, rotate it. This is based on, um, up the top here, you've got a rotation degrees, which is how far it'll rotate. So if I set that, that to 15, it's going to rotate a lot finer rotation. Um, you can't actually do this with dice, which for me was a real pain for this game because you're trying to line up um, these gems here. So what you can do to help you with um, things like that, I'll just close him. Um, is we have snap points, which is a way that you can basically have um, objects snap to something on a map, or either under the table or under a board. Um, Oh, if you're talking, I can't hear you. Sorry, I had myself muted. Yep. Um, I'll say that again. Thanks, Aaron. Um, so there's a couple of different snap points here. You've got regular snap and you've got um, rotate snap. So the one that I just did, there, there was the rotate snap. Um, it will snap an item to there, but it'll rotate it to the direction you want. So you can change the rotation with those arrows on the side. Um, and then basically, when you go to put your piece down, um, that will then snap to it. You can see that pops up and shows the shadow there where it's going to snap to. Um, and you can that'll, that'll now accept any object. Um, there's also some cool tagging in here as well now, which is new, um, which I'm not really going to get into. But basically, you can set tags for things. So I could set a name for this. Um, and then I could do the same for the snap point so that it'll only accept things um, that it's meant to. So, for example, I could have that spot accept a dice, but not nothing else. Uh, where at the minute, um, if I try and put this deck of cards here, it will want to snap to it. Um, and as a very brief overview, that's probably all the general objects um, or all your basic objects that you'll be using or that you tend to use in board games um, that you generally need to import. So hopefully that's a, a good brief overview of yeah what exists and how to how to bring everything in. Alright, um, I guess we'll open up to questions then. 
um, if anyone has any questions about like how do you want to how you want to do a specific thing in Tabletop Simulator or other questions, um, more general questions for Carl as well, uh, feel free to unmute and ask or send it through in the chat, the online events chat uh, on Discord, uh, and I'll ask that question. Um, yeah, so if, if, if anyone has any questions. Do people know how, how to unmute? <laughs> um, I will quickly jump back in. So okay, one, other yeah. thing, um, <clears throat> one other thing you can do, um, which I'm not going to get into, but um, like I was saying, you can set stuff up to script things. So there is scripting in here as well. Mm -hmm. So if you go to modding and scripting, this will basically bring up your scripting window. Um, if you want to see how to script, I have done a video on it, which I believe Aaron's already posted in the um, useful resources, um, where I basically script a setup of a game. Um, the other way you can do that is to right click on the actual object that you want to script um, and go scripting, scripting editor. Um, this is all um, Lua, L-U-A, um, is the language that it uses. And the API is pretty reasonable that they have available online. Um, so yeah, you can get into all that as well um, as a more advanced um, thing, but it, you do have access to all of that for, for more fancy things or, or trickier things that you can't do in here otherwise. Um, there's a lot of um, a lot of it can be done using scripting. Yeah. Uh, if, if no one has uh, questions, then I'll, 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 I'll ask something, I guess, Carl. Um, do, you want to sh do, do you mind showing us like one of your games like already oh. set up rather than, rather than, you know, just like the, the random yep. assortment of things? Uh, and how right. to, like once you've saved the game, ah. how do you load it up and, and all so. that? That's, that probably should be covered. <laughs> yep, sure. So once you've created your game, you've dumped all your stuff in, um, what you want to do is go up to games at the top, um, and that will bring up this pop-up. If you go down to save and load, um, that'll have all the games that you've saved. So you can see I've been pretty busy in here. Um, if you go save game up the top, um, that will then allow you to save a save your game. So I'm just going to call this demo two because I've already got one. We'll go save and then that will then appear um, there in line. So if I was to then exit back out, and I wanted to load that up again, I can just go to create. Um, single player or multiplayer. So if you want to play with other players, um, you need to go to multiplayer, um, which is where you can set up a server to invite other people to play. So generally you go public, put your um, server name and your password. Um, for the group that I run, we generally just use our name or first name and last name. Um, and then others can then search for that by going uh, join and they can search for um, yeah, whatever game um you've told them the uh, whatever your name you've told them the server is so i'll just go back into single for the time being um you can see there's demo two that i just saved um before or you can click on um, save and load and it brings up all your stuff so if i click on him go load that'll reload everything that you had in there just before um so some stuff that i've got in here uh let's load this one Probably a nice one to show. Um, so this is a um, card drafting set collection game called Move Into the Country. Um, what we have is a deck of cards um, in the middle, which get dealt to everybody, <laughs> um, as well as everybody has a player board. Now, these player boards are actually done as cards. Um, so one neat thing that I didn't say, um, with cards, they actually have a transparency um, to them as well. So if you leave a area clear, it will come up clear in Tabletop Sim. So the reason I've done this is because I needed something with a custom cutout um, that was double-sided. So to be able to do that, I've done that as a card with a different graphic on either side. Um, so one tricky thing that I had with this game, um, which was the first game actually that I tried to put into Tabletop Simulator, um, is that you're tucking cards um, under your player board. So we've got domino style cards here with two objects on them. I'll set my snap to 45 degrees. Generally you'd want it at 90, but for this I want it at 45. Um, and basically you're, you're tucking cards around the various areas of your board. So trying to physically get a card under, obviously you can't slide it under. When you click on it, it picks it up. If you sit that where you want it and then press U on the keyboard, that'll actually push it under um, any other objects there. So then I can continue to say here 
continue to put things under here. Um, and so on. So that's um, that's probably a basic um, game that I've got in here. Um, one of the more basic ones. Um, so, so is that thing on the bottom right, is that a PDF? Uh, yes. So, I, yep. yep, we've got the rule book in here as a PDF. <coughs> um, just to show you how that works. So you can scroll through it. Um, if you hover over it and press Alt, and you can do this on any item, that'll bring up the um, bring up what you're looking at larger. Is there any formatting uh, things that you need to be aware of for the PDF? Uh, no, none at all. Yep. Oh. Um, so yeah, whatever whatever size it is, um, it'll import it in exactly as that. So this was just a landscape um, A3 page, I think, uh, a, a5 page. Um, and that's just brought that in. Um, and you can just, yeah, put any, any size PDF in there. Mm -hmm. Um, over here, I've just got another deck of cards, um, which is just a subset of these. You see these buttons on the screen here as well, all players pass left, all players pass right. So this is a script actually that I've built in here. So, um, there's no easy way in tabletop sim to draft cards. Um, so I actually made a, a custom drafting table, which you can find on tabletop simulator as well. Um, I have that available in the cloud. Yeah. So is that a, a mod? that you can download or yes yep so that's available through steam workshop right steam so i'll show well right. yep steam workshop so if you pop up steam um a lot of people have put a lot of really cool things up online um such as things like this drafting table um just different bits and pieces like different um, objects if you just want meeples you can find me um, where people sort of upload them online so that they're publicly available so what i've just showed you um in tabletop sim now just saving it you have to um be hosting the actual session so you have to um, load that up yourself you can also upload it online so that it's publicly available to anyone um and i can show you how to do that in a second um so if we go to community and then workshop um in steam itself so this is not in tabletop sim um this will <coughs> load up the workshop um we click in here and we go tabletop sim Um, and you can see, so this is where you'll find a lot of games. So if you're actually looking for games to play, um, this is where you'll find all that stuff as well. So if I was to say search in here for, um, let's go drafting table, we should hopefully find my drafting table, um, card drafting table mod. Um, so to actually get these, if you find something that you want to um, use for yourself, um, you can just click on subscribe, <clears throat> which will then um, basically let it show up um, in your tabletop sim. So if we jump back into tabletop sim now, if I go games, you'll see you've got um, an option here called workshop. This will show all the different things that you've um, saved, basically. Um, so we'll see, we've got my my card drafting table mod here, um, along with a heap of other different things that I've down, um, saved, basically. Um, so just to load up some fun ones, there's this Meeple Rama, um, which is probably a good one to find if you want random meeples. Load up. Um, basically, we've just got tons of different meeples from all different games. Um, so if you wanted to use one of these in your game, um, say I wanted this aeroplane, I can just click on it, um, or hover over it, control C or right click and copy. Um, if I go back to my, my game, uh, let's go back to the country. I can then just paste that in here and I've now got that part in this mod. Um, you'll see when I hover over this as well, it actually has two states. So it's got um, a one of two there. So if I right click on that, um, we can see states here. And this is basically, um, if I click on this, yep, that's what I thought it would do. Um, it's going to lie down. So you can group anything into states. Um, if you select multiple things, um, you can then join them together basically to have um, multiple states. You can also do that just pressing the number on the keyboard to make things to be able to be stood up or lay down. Um, and again, you can just change the color of this, um, changing the tint. Um, so the other thing that you can do, which I was just 
saying is uploading to modding and go to workshop upload. Um, this is where you can upload things um, to be available to everyone. So if you go workshop upload, you have to put in a name and um, you also have to put in a thumbnail. So you need an image there ready as well. Um, if you click upload, that will then upload it into um, Steam Workshop um, to be then available for other people to find here. Um, one thing to note, when you do put it up, um, you have to change the visibility here. So the visibility always starts as uh, hidden or unlisted, I think, and you've got to change it so that it's then visible to other people. Um, I don't, I'm not sure which is which, but one of these is um, that, I think it's unlisted, is... Or well, maybe it's hidden. Anyway, one of them um, is um, visible to uh, anyone that you send the link to, but they can't search for it. Um, public is obviously publicly available to everyone. Um, yeah, and you can find a lot of cool things in there, like dials and, um, yeah, if you want to pull something from a specific game um, that you know of as well, um, I often search for the actual game, find that somebody's uploaded the game, and then copy the part out of the game to use that in a, um, a game of mine as well. Yeah, so th so so that works kind of like going to a game and like pulling out a part and using it in your prototype. Exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Uh, does anyone else have any questions? Yeah, I got a question. Hello. Yep. Hello. Yep. Yep. Far away. Right. Yeah. Hi, uh, I'm Yijian. I'm. I guess I'm also a designer in Malaysia. I've been trying to put my games up on uh, Tabletop Simulator. Yep. Uh, I do. Uh, I Carl, can you do any sort of scripting? Can you show off some scripting? Because I have no uh, like, like the last thing I did in 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 programming was like JavaScript in like two thousand and nine. <laughs> yep. Um, and I've completely forgotten that. I have no idea how to do Lua. Can I be a script kiddie as well? I will. I'll load up this game. Um. So this. Um, another one of my games, so I have scripted this one. Um, the the setup has been fairly consistent in this, so I decided to script it um, just to speed it up. Um, so <clears throat> if we click the script uh, setup button here, Ooh, wow, um, you'll see the game sets itself up. Um, that also deals cards to all the players. Okay, um, and does all that sort of stuff as well. So if I go to modding here now it's actually probably not going to be the oh no it's all in global cool so basically um it's all um lua is the language mm -hmm. um there's a api available that um tabletop sim um if you just google tabletop sim api it has the api um for how to do all these things basically um, yeah so, um, and i have got a video up showing um actually going through this exact um mod how i set this one up so if you if you're okay. interested um it's worth watching um that one as well aaron's already popped that up in the useful resources um thread here of this um, of the discord but basically what you're doing um is you you do get object by guid which is a unique identifier for each object so mm -hmm. whenever you right click on any on any object such as a deck oh i'll move that out of the way um you can go scripting and you'll see guid so that's that unique right. number for that particular thing um, and then more or less what you're doing is um, just calling different functions. So, for example, for these laying themselves out at the start, um, it's getting the position. Uh, where'd it go? Uh, local position, get position. Um, and then it just deals them out at, say, X plus, or yeah, X minus five in this case, to deal um, multiple bards out. Um, you can do everything that you can do in Tabletop Sim, like shuffling, dealing to players. Wait, hold on. Um, so... Uh, the GUID, um, so is it the, is the GUID persistent across saves? Um, it is for the, um, it is to an extent. Um, okay, so, you, so the are, number one reset. Yep, so um, say for the actual decks themselves, um, yeah. it is persistent. Um, for the individual cards, once anything gets right. created in tabletop right. sim, so say once I drag a card out, that now has its own unique GUID that didn't exist before I dragged it out of the deck. Okay, okay. Um, so there are other ways to do it as well. There's scripting zones, um, other other fancy ways that you can basically read um, things that are on the table. So you could put a scripting zone down that's, say, sitting underneath here um, that then reads all the cards or reads everything in there, and then you can search um, through all the different objects that it found within that zone, things like right. that. Right, okay. 
Um, if you're interested in getting getting into it, I'd probably watch my tutorials really good. Um, otherwise, find games that do something similar to what you want to do um, and then just try and find scripted versions of those on Tabletop Sim. Right. And have, have a look at the scripting in there. Um, you can often just pull parts straight out, which I have done um, for things. Um, this I did end up writing myself um, once I got, it, got my head around how to do it um, just because it was a bit cleaner. Um, mm -hmm. than some of the other things I found. Cool. That's about my questions. Thank you very much. Cool. Yeah, happy to. <coughs> okay. Oh, uh, another question I may have is like, what if I need a larger table or like a, <coughs> uh, a custom size table? Or like a, if let's say I wanted an L-shaped table. Tables are a pain in the ass. Um, ta tables are one of the, probably the things that have you've got the least flexibility on. Um, mm -hmm. There are, so there's custom rectangle, um, which is slightly larger. You've got to put an image for that for the background. Yeah, but that's not um, a lot of flexibility. It's not that much bigger. And then there's uh, custom square. That's no bigger again. Um, otherwise, there are some on the um, workshop, workshop. Okay. that have been, people have made um that are larger slightly larger again um i've also seen people if they need a larger area literally just putting a My tile name. or just putting a tile on the table and making it so big that it fills up the whole world basically. right okay so it's a topper basically yeah just making a giant topper and then locking it in place <laughs> <That's> um <laughs> That's just like like taking the the wooden piece, like a piece of plywood, and putting it on top of the table, yeah, right? Yeah. Jumping it on top of the table. You want to put a lazy Susan on top yeah. as well. <laughs> Let's just model some Chinese food, and then we can have a Chinese dinner. Yeah, why not? That's awesome. <laughs> Steam fish with ginger. I'd be down for that game. <laughs> Reunion dinner, the game. Reunion dinner. Like, I was proposing <laughs> that to, to Sam as well for one of the games. Like, uh, just all, all sorts of, like, uh, what do you call that? What do you call that? Bitching about each other. Like, oh, uh, well, have you got, um, so, so have you found a boyfriend? Uh, Draw. I, I will, Uno I will reverse stop cut. The, <laughs> I'll stop the recording um, <laughs> now. Uh, and yeah, thanks everyone for for joining. Uh, if you still have any questions, uh, feel free to like put them in the chat, and 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 Carl, Carl, you're in the you're in the server as well. Um, yep. So if you want to like put put any of your questions in the uh, in the Discord server, and then get we'll get some answers for you if we can um, throughout the week. Uh, I don't. I don't know how long you 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 stick around to like keep an eye on things, Carl. But I'll I'll ping you. Uh, if yep. there's any questions, that need your input. Yeah. Uh, if anybody wants has any specific question, just tag me, tag me in Discord, um, and I'll just yeah reply when I get to it. Um, I'll probably be going to bed soonish because it is getting late in Australia. Um, but yeah, no, definitely just tag me and I'll reply tomorrow. Uh, thanks so much. It was cool. 